Okay, in this video we're going to talk about beam construction. Now, from the drawings I have on the board, you can see that there are quite a few different ways of building a beam, okay? Um, the methods you use uh, will be based on, you know, what you have used in the past, uh, whether the engineer that drew up the plans or the draftsman that drew up, depends on what they put in it, if they want it a certain way. Um, so. Here's some of the different ways that you can um, run a beam and then run your floor joists into the beam. Okay, the first one up here is using a three-member beam and a floor joist, and this with a joist hanger. So this would be using joist hangers to hang all of the floor joists off of the beam. Okay, and the second one here we have a three member beam and then this little board here is called a ledger and then the raft uh, the floor joist is sitting on the ledger okay uh, that adds extra support so instead of using floor joists we just rip a two by four and a half nail half of it to the bottom of the um, of the beam running a chalk line so you get it all at the same height and nail it so it, it supports the beam, or the, the beam supports these with the help of the ledger, okay? Over here we have a three member beam of one size, so this would say maybe this is a two by 10, and then we have a floor joist that's a two by 12, and then we notch it at the top so it sits down on top of the floor joist um, for a little bit of extra strength up there. Okay, so would you use joist hangers on this? Possibly. Um, it all depends on what, how much load it needs to carry. Uh, but basically, it's a, a one size bigger notch to fit over the three member beam. Okay, in this method here, we have a three member beam, and the floor joists just run over and they overlap over the top of the beam itself. Okay. So we usually want about six inches of overlap on top of the beam. So your beam would be four and a half inches wide, but you want about six inches of overlap so that it go a little bit past the, the beam on each side. Um, so this way, this would be exposed underneath and you would see it. Um, if you, know, you were doing a basement or something, then this would be exposed and you have to cover it. Okay, uh, the next method here would be a three member beam with a ledger board, but this time where we used, let's say, a, a, again, this would be like a two by 10, this would be a two by 12, and this one they're using a two by 12 here, and then they're using a two by 12 here, and they're just notching out for that ledger board to give it some extra strength. Okay, so instead of using joist hangers, we're going to use um, this ledger board, okay? So you're buying it two by four and ripping it in half and you could put half of it on each side of the beam if there's another side, which there normally is, okay? All right, and then in this last one, I have this, this uh, two-member beam, um, but this was shown to me by an old carpenter a few years ago. Instead of using a three-member beam like this, we're going to use a two-member beam, and then we're going to, in between these two beams, we're going to put um, galvanized flashing. So you can buy galvanized flashing, and it comes in various widths, and it comes in rolls, 25 feet, 100 feet, 100, 25, 50, or 100 feet. And all you do is you roll it onto one of your members, tack it down, and then sandwich it between the other two. Now, being that it's galvanized steel and it's a vertical position and it's being supported on each side, there's not going to be any deflection in that. Um, whereas some of these beams over here, they might have deflection over time because of you know, just the weight of themselves and what's being loaded on top of them. But with this method, you got this piece of steel in between these two. If it's nailed up properly, there should be no deflection in the beam over time. So you could do any of these methods, any of these three 
member beams the same as this two member beam. Instead of using three members, you got two and a piece of rolled galvanized steel between it at whatever width you want. So I think I think personally that it would add more strength to the beam with less chance of deflection over time. Okay. So those are the different methods in which you can build a beam and attach floor joists to them. Okay, so one other thing I want to talk about real quick is what about the ends, all right? This is what they would call a pocket beam. This would be, um, let's say this is a concrete wall that the beam is sitting on, all right? And it sits in a pocket. So it sits down in the pocket down in here. So here's the top of the wall, you got your sill plate's going to go on top of that, and you've got your beam, and it's going to be supported by some kind of a post, but it's inside a pocket that sits in the wall, okay? A couple things you need to know about this. Number one, it needs to have about four inches of bearing. That means it has to sit on the wall at least four inches in, okay? Number two, it has to have an air space around it. So it has a half inch gap on all three sides so that air can get in there and circulate around it and it won't, hopefully it won't rot that end out sitting on top of that concrete because concrete is porous, it does allow water to get in there. So you have to be able to get the water, the humidity out of there. So if you have a little air gap around there, then hopefully the air will circulate and get rid of any moisture is there. And the third thing is that you can't, unless it's a green treated two bys, you cannot set it on top of the concrete. So it would have to have some kind of a spacer in there that's either metal or green treated. So you would set it underneath the beam so that the beam would not sit directly onto the concrete. Okay, so that's very important when you put this pocket beam up that you get it the correct size. So you measure the width of your beam, then you add an inch. You got your four inches plus a half an inch. Okay, if you're going to put um, an eighth inch uh, metal plate underneath your beam, you must make sure you allow for that one eighth inch metal plate. Okay, so that you don't have your beam so setting directly onto the concrete. Because from if you watched any know anything about green treated lumber and concrete, you have to use green treated lumber on concrete, otherwise the concrete will it will suck moisture out of the concrete and it will dry rot over time. Okay? So here are your different methods of building beams. Here's what a uh, pocket beam and some of the requirements for the pocket beam, and then kind of a picture of how it is. Um, inside the wall and it could have any type of a post, some, uh, some call it a column, uh, if you use a metal lolly you could do that, um, you could use a pier, a round or a square concrete pier, so there's different ways of supporting it, you just have to check um, your local building codes, check your plans to see what kind of a post is used to support the, the beam and how often you need to have it supported. Some say it depends on the size of your floor joist, you know, 8, 8 feet, 10 feet. I mean, you could go up to 20 feet, you could span if the, if the beams are big enough. So make sure you check your drawings, make sure you check your codes, make sure you check everything before you go and put that thing in there.